Hey friends, it's Riskit, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I went about creating a digital portrait using Procreate on the iPad Pro. Before we get started, I want you all to know that this is actually my first digital portrait. I've always been able to draw, but I haven't always been able to draw everything. See, I'm actually really bad at drawing faces. But a couple of years ago, I decided to change all of that, and I went back and studied a ton of the art fundamentals that I'd skipped over when I was a kid growing up. I really dove deep and took a lot of online courses, watched a ton of YouTube videos and tutorials, um, studied the Loomis method. Uh, I, I really wanted to know like how to properly construct a head and draw a face so that it looked realistic. It's funny in a weird kind of way because I used to be a really good airbrush artist. I used to airbrush trucks and cars and paint canvases and portraits of people all the time. I'd take a reference image and I'd use a tiny little airbrush gun to recreate it but usually on a much larger scale. The whole process of making these was really awesome but at the same time I kind of felt like I was painting by numbers. I got really good at pulling images apart and I'd spent a lot of years learning how to do that. But ultimately, at the end of the day, I couldn't just make up my own realistic images because I'd skipped a lot of the art fundamentals about lighting, shadow form, and so on. I could always airbrush a portrait and make it look exactly like that person, but I could never sit down with a pen and paper and do a sketch of somebody, or I could never sit down with an iPad and do a digital portrait of somebody. This portrait was a really good exercise for me to take everything I'd learned about head construction and putting it into practice by creating a full-on digital portrait. That said, it's not perfect. See, when I was an airbrush artist, I would often project the image onto whatever surface I was going to be painting on, and then do a rough outline so that I always had a guide to go off of. But with this, I really wanted to try and draw it freehand, the way that my eyes see it, and try and see what mistakes I made so that I could improve later on. So, although it has a ton of mistakes, I'm actually really proud of this first attempt, and I'd like to share it with you. I'll stop the video along the way and show you what brushes I used to create this, um, but just before we get started, we hit 400 subscribers this week, and I'm really, really happy with that. Thank you so much for um, all of the support. The drawing course is still on the way, but I'm kind of changing the process that I use to make it. So yeah, if you want to stay tuned for that or whatever other videos I've got coming your way, hit the subscribe button and let's get started. Cool, so now that that long ass intro is out of the way, here's the reference image that I'll be working with today. It's an old photo of my wife and I chose it specifically because she was smiling with her mouth closed and I was a little intimidated to jump into drawing teeth just yet. It wasn't until later that I figured out that this is probably not the best sort of lighting to reference an image from. Uh, a lot of the tones are really flat, there's not a whole lot of difference in tonal value on her face. Um, but you know, I went with it and uh, it came out looking okay. So using what I'd learnt while studying the Loomis method and a few other tutorials, I started constructing the head out of different circles and planes and trying to connect them. Uh, luckily Procreate lets you undo because this part actually took me a little while to figure out. I wasn't really good at drawing heads or faces um, and I still sort of struggle with it a little bit, uh, but it was the, the closest sort of rough outline that I could get and um, I went with that. As for the brush that I use, I use the technical pencil brush found under the sketching tab in Procreate. It's a pretty rough brush, but it just reminds me of drawing with a pencil, so I went with that. Once I'm happy with that sketch, I drop the opacity of the layer and put a new layer on top where I was going to do a more refined outline. This gets rid of a lot of the technical line work that was made in my initial sketch and lets me just focus on the bigger picture. The brush that I'm using for this is actually the chalk brush that's found under the calligraphy tab in Procreate. I like this brush a lot because it's got a bit of a smoothing feature to it. It kind of grabs whatever curve you're drawing and tries to make it even more rounded. That way I don't have to worry about my line work being jittery in any way. So now that my outline's done, I create a new layer underneath it and I start smashing in the largest areas of tonal value in the image. I kind of blurred my eyes when I was looking at the reference image so that I could sort of see the, the bigger areas that stand out to me. And that way I've got something to go off as I start refining each piece. 
Once I'm happy with that, I've picked out one feature in particular, in this case I'm starting with the nose, and I'm starting to blend it all together, painting in new highlights and shadows, and then smudging them in a way so that it blends into like a more realistic shape. Just to give you a quick overview about how the whole painting process of what I did here works, I'm using the Hard Blend Airbrush from the brushes menu, and I'll just lay down some gray so that we have something to work with. I'll put a lighter shade of it on top as well. Then when I'm trying to blend areas and paint in more details, I use the Salamanca brush under the painting tab. This brush is really cool because it's got a slight bit of texture to it, but it also allows me to sort of color pick two colors that are overlapping and then gently paint on top of them. And it kind of smudges them in a weird way while applying the new shade on top. So it's a really useful way for blending different brush strokes together um, and sort of smoothing out areas. But you can also just, you know, hammer down highlights or more shadows as you go. Um, it's like, it's just really versatile. And I think that's why I stuck with it. You can use the smudge tool over here as well. That's kind of just pulling and pushing different colors into each other. And it's not really giving me the result that I want. I'm using the same brush and the same techniques to refine each feature of the face until it looks slightly finished. The only thing I might point out is that as I finished each area of the face, I started to realize just how different my initial sketch had been from the reference photo. And that was a problem. But luckily Procreate has some liquify tools hidden in its menus where you can sort of pull and push different areas of your image. So that's what I did and you'll, you'll probably see the image sort of pop in and out every now and then, the head might slightly change shape. And that's just me using the liquify tool to sort of push different areas around until it kind of looks a little bit more like the reference photo. Of course, I wouldn't be able to do this if I was drawing a portrait with a pencil and paper, but I'm still learning and um, I look forward to that challenge when, when that day comes. It's kind of funny, but a few people have said, and, and I kind of agree, that my picture actually winds up looking a lot more like my wife than the photo did. I don't know what it is about the photo, maybe it was the type of old phone she took it on, uh, but I don't know, something about it just looks off. Like I can tell it's it's my wife's phone, but um, I, I think as I was drawing it, um, I sort of kept looking more and more away from the reference and, and painting in what I already knew my wife looked like in my head. And um, at the end of the day, yeah, I, I kind of think that this image sort of uh, matches her features a little bit more. For all the eyelashes, eyebrows, and hair strokes, I'm actually going back and using the chalk brush that I used in my more refined sketch, um, and just using that to paint in all the different hair strands.
One thing I really struggled with when I was working on this picture was the lips. Um, something about them just isn't quite right. Uh, I don't know what it is. I've tried flipping the canvas um, back and forth in different directions just to sort of see if it would trick my brain into seeing it a different way. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was also like how dark they are compared to everything else in the picture. Um, as I said earlier, there's not really a whole lot of tonal variety in this picture. So I couldn't really just start hammering in shadows that weren't there. And I think that might play a role in why the end result is a little bit off. So towards the end here, I wasn't really happy with like the overall composition. Like it, you know, it's just a floating head at this point. Um, so you'll actually see me use the smudge tool to sort of duplicate everything that I had, uh, smudge the hell out of it, and then sit it behind this final image of Simone. And that way the whole thing just sort of looked a little bit more dreamlike and interesting. Cool, and there's the final image. So that was it for this one, guys. I'm still really happy with how this turned out, uh, despite all of the mistakes in it. I think it was a really cool first attempt and I'm proud of it. Also, just a quick mention, I've just released a bunch of hoodies with all the artwork from my Etsy store that's already on there, but now available on hoodies. So feel free to check those out if you want, links down in the description. The next couple of videos are going to be portraits quite similar to this, but I have a really cool affinity designer and Adobe Illustrator video coming your way soon. So stay tuned. Uh, hit the like if you like. If you don't, tell me why and please subscribe for more. Thanks.